In today's video, I'm going to show you one of the ways you can adjust pitchforks on the chart depending on the relationship between price and the lines of the pitchfork. As usual, I want to remember that a full price action analysis goes beyond what I'm going to show you here. This is just one side of a multifaceted analysis. From number one to number three, we have two opposing price vectors that form a higher high and a solid market extreme. Since we are talking about a solid market low in number two, we can immediately derive the inward and outward frequencies as it is shown in the black horizontal lines. The inward and outward frequencies can be used to form objective upper and lower limits of a demand zone when we are dealing with a low and a supply zone when, in, when we are dealing with a high. It's important to notice that these lines are not loosely drawn. They have a very specific way of being grounded in the candles. That helps because sometimes it's not clear exactly where such lines should be placed. So an objective rationale ra really helps with that. In the 2-3 price vector, we already have an earlier indication that one of these black horizontal lines work by looking at how the large bullish bar in the middle of the vector reacts with the black line. There's an explosion of volatility in the middle of the 2-3 vector and the lower tail of that bar touches one of the frequency lines that are being used to form the upper limits of a demand zone, and then takes off. The interpretation there is very clear. It becomes obvious at this point that there are powerful buyers sitting on that level. Using the principle of short-term market memory, we can start to build an analysis around these little pieces of information. Notice that we have buyers in the major fractal dimension being able to create a higher high as number three is higher than number one, and we also have the subtler detail of buyers touching and then taking off for, from a recently drawn frequency line. With all of that said, it's also important to remember that we must try to look for evidence for both sides of the market. We began talking about buyers because there is heavier evidence for their case. There is not much that can be said about the sellers here, as they are being dominated by the buyers in this market. I say that you must remember to consider that because as human beings we tend to be biased about many different things simultaneously. If you don't develop a more neutral approach to the analysis, you will end up missing many opportunities. You don't have to be a buyer nor a seller. You should be sort of like a referee of this game of buyers and sellers. In other words, you should simply watch carefully what each one is doing and then act accordingly when there is a window of opportunity. In a scenario like this, we can also deploy a pitchfork to start sketching the line work portion of the analysis. Notice that I did many things before even talking about drawing a pitchfork. That serves to show you that plotting pitchforks randomly on your chart and expecting them to work is a bad idea. Pitchforks need context to work properly, just like with any other tool. We can draw a standard pitchfork using high number one, low number two, and high number three. Let's advance price to see what happens. Price flirted with the upper line of the pitchfork. That's an indication that price indeed recognizes the boundaries of the pitchfork. Right at this moment, price is touching the intersection of the inward frequency line with the center line of the pitchfork almost exactly. Notice that the bar that does that creates a large lower tail, meaning that buyers were found in this area as expected, since this is a de uh, demand zone. At this point, we can remove the first pitchfork and draw a new one to attempt catching the movement to the upside. We will do that using low number two, high number three, and the current low as three alternating axes of this new pitchfork. If you were to go along in the lower line of this new pitchfork, you have to remember that the mandatory stop loss order is below low number two, as this is the current line of defense of the major buyers we are counting on. Let's advance price to see what happens. As you can see here, if you were to go long in the lower line of the pitchfork, you would have been triggered. However, notice that price drifts away from the boundaries of the pitchfork that was recently drawn. 
there are a few different approaches we can use to adjust that, but one of them is to adjust the C-axis of the pitchfork to compensate for the drift. So I will draw another pitchfork using the new adapted C-axis, and I will leave this one we already have to show you a different approach later. The new pitchfork will use low number two, high number three, and now the drift as the C-axis. Let's advance price to see what happens. Here we can see that the red pitchfork that has a C-axis adapted to the drift created in the blue pitchfork catches price action in its center line. The original blue pitchfork, however, fails to do that. We already saw that the red pitchfork was effective here, but there are other ways we could use the blue pitchfork to arrive at a similar result or even use as confirmation. Let's erase the red, red pitchfork to see this more clearly. If we take the blue pitch fork that is out of tune and then modify it, we'll see that its upper line catches price action in the same way that the center line of the red pitch fork we have did. Another way to visualize that is by using frequency shifting. In other words, if we force the, the lower line of the blue pitch fork to fit the drift, we'll see that the center line of the pitch fork also catches price action with a good degree of accuracy. In other words, all pieces of evidence from different pitchforks lead to the same area in price. That's one of the ways that you can use pitchfork to, to analyze a chart. There are dozens of other ways that need to be specifically fit to each market scenario. If you have interest in learning about these techniques, check out my website fractalflowpro.com or watch many of the free videos here in the channel. I hope this video was helpful in some way. If you enjoyed it and wish to support the channel, Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notifications button so you don't miss future uploads, share the video with your community, and leave your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.